Hi Ellie. I the fish and I threw some fish eggs into the lake here. I think they are um, little perch and they're devouring these fish eggs here. And this is really something that helps to provide for our family, for food. This is fresh fish, this is healthy fish, and it doesn't get more local than this. I'm out here on our property. I am right now actually moving the cattle. You can see right here, uh, when we moved to our farm here 15 years ago, um, this was completely overgrown. Um, it had, you see all this underbrush is coming up here now. It's usually a swampy area, but the last three years have been so dry in the summertime that it has dried out. A lot of the um, trees have seeded again, and we didn't have animals on here for a couple of years, um, some years ago, so that's why they got established here. But right now, before all the leaves turn yellow and and the trees are going to drop them. I'm actually going to put my highland herd on here and they're going to get some good forage here. They're really good browsers. It's a cattle breed um, that's really good at that. And they have the characteristic, the quality that they can turn um, just like the fjelku that you saw in my last video. If you haven't seen that, watch that. It's a really good video. But the highland cattle have this um, ability to turn low input feed into a really, really high um, meat product so I'm gonna put them on here and our pastures are still growing because of the rotational grazing I'm doing really well on that and they are actually coming back up and I'm gonna have the cows munch away on this now I frequently get questions like um, you know why we don't drive with our tractor over our fields to tear up the moss and stuff like that or why we don't seed um, plow and seed new hay fields and all of that. Come, right here. Right here. Come here. Come, no, go sit up. Come on. So we're slowly turning these pastures. By the way, they, they couldn't even be plowed. You see all these rocks and everything here, but, but we don't want to do that. Um, all the seeds that we want, all the plants that are beneficial, they are already on here. Um, we're gonna stimulate this ground by these daily moves and um, by, by chickens scratching up moss and so on. So we're slowly improving these pastures. Um, this here is kind of like a forestry pasture. It's something that Chol Salatin would, I think, call a savanna. Um, it's a quite swampy area, but it's perfect for these highland cattle because they just come here and they browse and they really turn that stuff into meat. Here we have a couple more calves coming. Yeah, so we, we don't want to we don't want to seed. We don't want to use these machines. We don't we want to work with nature, and um, this is so much healthier, not just for the cattle, but even for um, even for the other insects and 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 plants and carbon and methane 
sequestration, what, whatever you call that. And um, we're very happy to be able to use this. So um, because we're building lots of topsoil here, with every move, we're building more and more um, of, of, of topsoil. We are increasing the quality of this. And there is this underground web of, of um, you know, fungi and, and roots, both from the forest into the field, um, that they share lots of good stuff with each other. And um, believe it or not, this makes it even more um, moisture or drought resistant. Now here you see all these suckers coming up here. And that's because we took down so many trees here and now these, the first years after that, the suckers shoot up. Um, the cows keep them under control, but I will take um, my brush cutter and cut this away so that um, we will eventually get rid of these. So when I went to school, they said that you should plow your hay fields every three years, not to have so many dandelions. And uh, man, I don't not only want dandelions, I want all these wildflowers on there. Dandelions, for example, they just make the soil so nice and loose um, with their deep roots. Um, they pull out moisture from the ground. They are really beneficial for the animals, like an antibiotic. And I, I want that stuff. I want that to grow. So you will never see my hay fields. By the way, this was pasture that I just showed. It wasn't a hay field, but even our hay fields, the only time you'll see them even is after we mow them or after a cow grazed over them. Because all these plant, plants grow at different speeds, some of them even different times of years. Um, it'll, it'll just look beautiful in a different way. So what other people look at like, oh man, we look at, that's exactly what we want. And so, um, that doesn't mean that the quality is not as good. The quality is better and you can even increase the quantity. So if you built this topsoil and all of that over many years, you really, really increase the, the quality um, of all of this. So, um, just remember when when the pioneers came to North America and the prairie, they had grass over six feet tall. Um, and, and, you know, that was just being mowed by these huge, huge herds of, um, of bison and buffalo. So, um, in a sense, you don't, you, that really helps you to understand that you don't have to re-sow and, and re-plow and reseed a hayfield. Those weren't reseeded for thousands of years. Now when you hear me talk about daily moves, we try to implement this as much as possible on our property, but so far it's about half to two thirds of our property where we can implement this. Um, this is the field with all this brush that I just moved the cows to and there's just no way I can do daily move and moves um, in that terrain um, and un until the cows have really mowed down most of this brush and until that's all gone. No, this is going to be your field. You should be happy. Other cows don't have anything. They eat winter feed already. These uh, cattle are doing really well. The calves are growing very fast. For, for being highland calves. These three are the ones that were born in May and um, they're doing really well. By the way, down there you can see, um, you can see the calf that had the maggots. 
I'm sorry, I'm filming with my iPhone. I don't know why it keeps doing this whole kind of stuttering, flickering video. But that's the calf that was sick, doing really well, growing, jumping, playing. So, really excited that we have a lot of pasture left. So most of you guys know that we've had the most severe drought in the last 100 years plus here in Sweden this year. And it hit a lot of farmers real hard. Um, we didn't get more rain than others in our area. In fact, locally we have gotten less rain than even people within an hour and a half around us here. It was pretty much the same in most parts of Sweden. Um, but we have done really well in the drought. We're really thankful that rain has started to come now. But if you look here, you see that new fresh grass is growing, even though temperatures, it's much colder. It's in the single digits now at night, Celsius. One thing you really have to understand is that the cattle has already grazed here twice, at, actually at this particular spot here, th the, three times already. So this regrowth that you see here is the fourth time. It, it'll be the fourth time the gra cattle will graze here this year, in this year of drought. So that has really worked well. Like. Please believe me that I'm not sharing this to brag or anything, but that I'm sharing this because we used to do differently and we are implying this. It's, it's not me who invented this, but we are so blown away by this. I am so blown away by this. Um, really exciting. So you see these plants here that we would still consider weeds and stuff and that are getting less and less as we are implementing this. So I, I just want to thank you for tuning in again to watch this update. Um, you know, again, watch this video about uh, the the farm in Sweden that we aired on Monday. Um, it's a new series on our channel called Great Farms of Sweden. It's not c trying to copy what Justin Rhodes did in the States, but it was definitely inspired by it because there's so much more than the Swedish homestead. So I hope you tune in there and enjoy that. And um, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.